So Mr Arnott, please. I think it is vital for us to remember that the money that we are talking about here is taxpayers' money. And there is a duty that must be there to keep costs down uh, wherever possible. Uh, I'm concerned, firstly, uh, page 19 of the report, where it mentions AD 14 or above posts as 4.6%. And it says that almost uh, one... Uh, it says that that's lower than the other EU institutions. Uh, AD 14, when community tax is taken into account, is roughly the amount that the British Prime Minister would, would earn once the tax differentials are considered. So we've got almost one staff member in 20 in the Parliament services who is earning more than the British Prime Minister. That seems to me uh, to be fundamentally and deeply wrong, and yet it's still lower than the other, inst other EU institutions. Um, on the security issue, I have to say I don't find the explanations and assurances that we've received here uh, to be sufficient to convince me that we won't have a serious security breach again. Uh, but I know you've, uh, you've answered uh, that uh, already, but, um, but if I could just, just ask the question, how much has it actually saved in terms of cost bringing security back in a house? Um, the office allowances issue on page 9, um, those office allowances, I've been shocked as a new member of the Parliament uh, to see that money is just dumped into a bank account that there seems to be so few checks and balances that I have to work out for myself how much, uh, you know, I have to work out for myself uh, to account it and to make sure that I'm doing that properly uh, myself and, uh, and to make sure that I uh, will be able to provide transparency uh, to voters in the UK uh, to, the best of, uh, to the best of my ability, but that there don't seem to be those checks and balances. That seems to be fundamental to any democratic system, that, um, that a light-touch arrangement where you talk about, uh, about things like providing more guidance for members, well, that's one thing, but surely there must be some proper checks there, even in what you call light-touch. Um, as far as the lux price is concerned, again, this seems to be something which is not necessary expenditure at all. This is something which, uh, which is almost half a million euros of taxpayers' money on something which, uh, on something which has no practical uh, benefit. Uh, finally, on the catering issue, uh, catering should not be making a loss. When I go for lunch in the canteen, surely I should be paying the full economic cost of my meal. Again, that is something that cannot be justified uh, to taxpayers. Uh, so I, I just ask you to, uh, to consider those points, really. Yes, uh, this is a committee that has always fought for price uh, uh, for. Uh, proper spending of EU money, but also the uh, question of uh, the free mandate. And, of course, there are different traditions relating to these things, too. Anyway, Secretary-General. Thank you. You said one out of 20 is uh, this category of staff. I'm afraid that's not the case. We're talking about 70p, about we're out of about 6,000, so uh, I, th I think that's not correct, uh, your, your, your figure. Now, what is the cost of additional security measures? Well, actually, this has led to savings. The external uh, service, the outsourced service, cost more than having uh, permanent employees in security. Now, perhaps you, you can uh, start arguing about how much the savings are, but at the end of the day, it's meant savings. Now, light touch uh, arrangements uh, wasn't my idea. It was the expression used in the report adopted by the plenary, and I quoted it. 
that's what we were required to do, and I think we did so. But it's at the end of the day, it's not the administration that decides these issues. It's the political leadership of the European Parliament. Now, cost of candines. Perhaps you've seen the graph, the deficit that ran because costs weren't adapted. But uh, we've addressed that already in 2013. The figure is way lower. We are going to be rolling out further measures to reduce the deficit in the cafeterias. Thank you. Uh, in the report, it states that the proportion of AD14 to AD16 establishment posts corresponds to 4.6%, uh, which, uh, which is just under 1 in 20. Uh, the reference to 77 is, um, is to paragraph 77. Um, if, if my figure is not correct, uh, can you please uh, explain what the discrepancy is between the figure that I've given and the report? Yeah, herzlichen Dank. Thank you. You've got to draw a distinction here. We're talking uh, directors and directors general. Directors and director generals. What's the exact figure? We've got 56 here in if it's possible to reach the post of AD14. So that means that we end up uh, with more AD14s that do not have the function of a director. And that's what we're trying to illustrate here. The number of directors has increased, but d deliberately we've decided to remunerate them uh, in the way that a head of unit would have been paid. So they're one step lower in the hierarchy. And that's something allowed to us by the new staff regulations that were, that, uh, were implemented at the beginning of this year. People appointed to director or director general must first of all begin in a lower step, and only if they prove themselves can they go up. Thank you.